Well, hello everybody, welcome to Pro-Am Outdoors. Today we're doing a product review. Not like what you've seen on other product reviews, we're actually gonna test it out. Okay, so I'm doing something I didn't want to do as a product review, but I was wanting to look at a rod reel combo that was under $200 that, you know, I could just go around and fish with. So I'm on the internet looking at different rods, reels, combos, different things. I wanted something that'd be under 200. I wanted something around 150 bucks. Something that's a seven foot, medium heavy, fast action, with a good 7.5 to gear ratio reel. Now, you know Lose has a lot of those out, but is Lose, Lose really that good? So I went to Lose and I looked at different ones online and then I started watching these product reviews on YouTube and it really bugged me why so many, especially, and I, nothing against like the young 14, 15 year old kids saying stuff about a product but they haven't been around long enough to understand what a real product can do over time just simple as that so these people that go out and they test rods and reels and tackling stuff do they really know what they're talking about they're not reviewing they're just showing what they have and going fishing does that make sense to you is that a real review or test no i don't think so why do they just go out and fish and say hey this is a good rod how do you know well, today I'm going to do a product review to show you why it's very important to test out a rod before you say it's any good, an actual test. So I did, went to Academy and I said, let's find something around 150 bucks. But can you really get a good rod, a good reel combo for around 150 bucks? Actually, I found one. And it is the Lose Combo, the new Hack Attack series. And yes. 159.99 so right at about 150 bucks but what makes this one different than other ones that's in the same price range has some good key features to it that i looked at and i absolutely absolutely love it for what it does so the lose hack attack combo let's just read down the list to show you what we're talking about okay so it's a one-piece SLP super low profile graphite frame and side plate. 10 bearing system with stainless steel double shielded ball bearings and zero reverse. One-way clutch bearing multi-setting brake MSB. Utilizing both an external click system. And so that's what I like, the click system. And it also has a four pin positive on off centrifugal brake system in a hundred and fifty dollar basically 160 dollar rod reel it does not have the 20 pound drag it has a 15 pound drag i was looking for something in a 20 pound drag but you know 15 if you know how to set the rod upright you can do it so the rod features it is premium hm30 high module graphite blank now if anybody knows what hm30 means please let me know i think when i looked it up that IM8 and HM30 is 30 million modules or pounds, uh, tons graphite. So I think the 30 is the same as uh, the 80. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments. Lose exclusive lightweight graphite skeleton reel seat, wind grips, dry tip grip, wind grips on it. Look at that, I love the wind grip here and the wind grip on the knob, I love that. I really like that a lot. And it has stainless steel guide frame with smooth aluminum oxide insert. So it has stainless steel guides and the aluminum oxide inserts. And the reason that's so important to me is because I like fishing with braided line. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and put it to the test. Not just a review, we're going to put it to the test. So let's open it up and take a look at it first. So what are we looking at in this reel? So we have a high speed, seven five to one gear ratio. You got the wind grips on here. If you listen to this, everything has is on click system, which I like a lot. Very easy snap button, anti-reverse, aluminum machine spooling. But what intrigues me the most is I like this here, the click system 
Now, instead of the pin on the side over here, you have a, deal, a little thing that you push down, pops the side out. Okay, you got the magnetic brake inside here. So you also have a centrifugal brake system. Now, the way I like to set mine up is two in, two out, opposite sides. This is already set up that way. Then you set this halfway and then you put the line on and then you work from there and it just snaps back on pull the pin up and you're locked in so okay so let's go ahead and get started on this first thing i want to do is go ahead and take all this crap off from the store i hadn't taken it off since i bought it because i wanted to show you guys and get that gone so now i just pop that out i'm gonna pull this off that's gone and we're gonna cut this uh tag says wing grip on it which i like so this is the hack attack this is the paper that you get on it i really like this one for a few features even though it's small lose limited time hey that's your limited warranty card right there so hey they're always limited right so now we got stuff off of it there's one thing i see a lot of people do on the videos is they'll leave this on there it's just a plastic for shipping and I don't want that on there either. I want to feel that butt. Now this one don't come with the wing grips on the butt cap, which doesn't matter to me because I'm not holding it there trying to fight fish anyway. So we got it all cleaned off and now we're gonna go ahead and spool it up. Now here's a good indicator a lot of people don't know. They go ahead and they feel their rod reel up all the way to the top. That's where you start backlashing. If you look right here, I only have it to about an eighth, 16 to an eighth at the top of your reel. Once you have that, stop her yet. You got plenty of line to cast as far as you want, but that will help you stop backlashing and then overfilling your reel. Okay, so now I've just rigged it out, got it spooled. I've also put a Texas rig three yacht wide gap hook with a 3 16 ounce tungsten weight this is what I bought this rod for, and I'm going to use it because I love brush hogs, so it's lightweight worm rod is what I'm using it for, the right reason I went to a medium heavy, because I love, there's certain places I love just to flip and pitch or cast out, and I wanted a good 7 foot medium heavy action for that style. So we're going to go ahead and rig this out just like if I was out fishing, that's how you test it out. Okay, so now what I want to do is set up the reel with the weight line. So like I told you in my last video where I teach people how to flip and pitch, you need to really go watch that one. It starts from the butt to the reel, through the eyes, to the tip, to the lure, how to do this correctly. But it really needs to be set up real. I had to set this reel up according to the weight of that line. Every time you pick up a new rod, reel, please, please, set it up correctly and you'll have less backlash and you'll catch more fish so let's set this one up so the way i set this up is i'm going to just drop it and that's too slow so what i want to do is just back it off a little bit that's too fast i backlashed so we really need to set that up you start with the clicker part here first where you don't have to thumb it. One click more. Beautiful. That's perfect. Okay, so now we click this uh, tensioner knob up a little bit. It's set just right. We're going to go over here and set, I think I have it at five. Max, I'm going to set it over to three. I like that a little bit better. There we go. Now we need to check and see on how tight everything is. Now we need to check and see how everything's tight. That's too loose. So we're going to tighten the star drag up a little bit. There we go. Then we're going to free spool it and see what happens. Now that I got the reel set up, everything should just be smooth. When it drops to the ground and it doesn't backlash, it's set up. And every lure is different. Perfect. Now, if it's set right, I should be able to just to easily cast out without backlashing. Boom, perfect, no backlash. I can even do it a little bit less when I get better and go further. I can do that. So the reel feels good to me now. Let's check out the rod, see what it can do. Okay, so how do I test if the rod, the line, the hook, or any of that's any good? Cardboard box, 
10 pound weight. You'll love this. I use the same technique on how to set the hook properly. That video is going to come out probably the next video after this one. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and you'll see how to set a hook properly by using a cardboard box. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this out a little bit. I'm going to put the hook in it, put the 10 pound weight on it and see how the drag works and see how the uh, action of the rod works. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is take the rod. I'm going to place the hook just on the inside of the box. It's a 10 pound weight. So with a 10 pound weight in a cardboard box, it should slide and pull that 10 pound weight, but it'll give me a good indicator of how this rod reacts. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click it down and jerk back and see what it does. Hope I don't break the rod. Ah, I'm liking it. It's got a good feel on the hook set. It's a 10 pound weight. You don't want to do it till you break, but you want to see how. See, I got plenty there. Maybe got it too much, so I'm going to set it back a little bit. So I want a little bit more drag than that. Too much drag. Will this reel hold up to the test? We'll find out. Too much. Let's try again. There we go. Now that'd be a good hook set. Now that's a true test when you get a new rod and reel combo. Set your reel upright, test your drag, test everything out. If it's got the feel you like, see if it's what's, how you like everything. Now I'm going to test the rod to see if the, for the sensitivity, if I like it or not, just by casting through over there at the grass, that should be light enough and see what I like. Cast it over there and I'm just going to pull it back. I'm gonna feel the sensitivity of it. Now it's pretty good. It's not as good as some that I've had in the past, but it's not too bad. I used to have rods where I used to look at it and say, man, look at the color of that rock down there. That's how sensitive they were. So now that's how you test the sensitivity in yards. So you can do almost everything before you even go to the water, but we still need to go to water to see if we can catch a fish on it. Well, we're out here at Finn Feather, my son and his girlfriend Bailey there taking the dog down to the water. We're gonna try out this new rod that I have and see what happens. We're gonna test this new rod out, see if it's any worth the crap. Got some ducks over there. And I'm gonna try to do a little pitching and flip, or well, pitching first. Showed y'all how to do that on the last video. And it seems a little bit, the, the line itself a little new so it's going to zing through it so i'm just letting it sit i'm going to show you how this hooks it a lot of people reel down and let the line stay tight you don't want to do that you want to do what showed you earlier karate chop action on it and it'll pop it in their mouth don't know if we'll catch something but we're going to try this rod out anyway okay so pitching it out there now i'm going to try to just overhand cast see how see how good this reacts oh good lord good cast on it I barely flicked it out with my wrist out that far. <laughs> so far, I'm liking it. So the hook set, just quick. That's all you got to do. Just quick, just like that, and you'll catch a fish. And it's a good one. So you saw how I quickly hook set across. Oh, that's a good one too. Good fighter. Mm-hmm. All right. There we go. Okay, so it's getting late in the evening. Sorry about the lighting, but 
What do I think about this rod? Well, you know, it's pretty good, pretty nice, cast pretty decently. As you can see on the video, I did hook a fish. It does pretty good. I mean, it's not bad for a $159.99 reel, $160 rod and reel combo. I think it's pretty good. I think it's worth getting if you're wanting something just to do a couple of different things. I tried a Carolina rig on it. Really didn't, it was okay. If I'm in my kayak, I'll probably pull it out for Carolina rig if I want to. But you're better off with a heavy action 6.6 rod for Carolina rig. Uh, but most of the time, I'm doing pitching and flipping with lightweight worm three-odd hook. That's what I've got this one for out of my kayak. Light worm, chatter baits, as you can see on here. A swim bait, a swim bait rod, lightweight worm rod. That's what I'm looking for. But it's a medium heavy action seven foot. So it's a very versatile but yeah i like it it's not too bad now would i do this uh would i have this as an in my arsenal if i was tournament bass fishing probably not but it's good for all around bank fishing kayak fishing it's a really good setup for that so my thoughts on the lose hack attack combo rod from academy it's a thumbs up we'll see you here next time on pro-am outdoors